All right, I'm back. I know I was just on here half a second ago, but I haven't done a uh, gin and spin podcast in a while. We had company and uh, I've been busy, <laughs> so this is not going to be a gin and spin podcast. This is going to be a green tea because it's a respectable thing to have at 1030 in the morning when you have allergies, especially. So here, here's to whatever it is you're drinking at whatever time it is you're watching this. Yep, some good green tea. Let me get this over here. And uh, so, this is just going to be me. I'd been having fun, exciting guests, and I will be getting them back. But uh, this one, you just got to listen to me. So, <laughs> let me put this down here on what it is I'm working on. And I'm just going to talk and tell you what all we have going on while I spin. But first things first, the uh, wheel you see in this video. Oh, no, I touched something on the screen. Oh well, we're just going to have to have that up there now. <laughs> I don't know what I touched. Oh no, okay, so it went away. This is a beautiful merino braid that is actually not some, one of mine. This is uh, something that a friend of mine bought from another mutual friend of mine, and uh, it is beautiful. Rembrandt yarn, though, if you look them up, is where this braid came from, so if you want one of your own. And uh, my friend who doesn't spin yet, I think she just is drop spindling at the moment, wanted it spun into yarn for her to crochet and also wanted me, oh, now I'm going to have to keep my dog from eating it. Um, she wanted it, quote unquote, jazzed up a bit. So this is what it looks like as a braid. And let's see, move Jolene. Jolene keeps wanting to eat all the fiber, which is not good around here. But in order to uh, jazz it up, as requested, I am um, adding in, just sparingly, nothing too crazy. Jolene, can you chill? I swear, you see, she's so cute, but she just wants to eat everything. I've got this, like, blue-dyed fire star. And then this, like, it's technically the clear um, Angelica. So I've just been adding, and don't worry, I'm not going, like, two bananas. But I'm just adding a little bit in. You can see the shine there. And the wheel of the day is uh, the bullfrog, which I think y'all are all probably tired of me talking about how much I like it. So I won't continue to ramble about that. But uh, so I'm going to get this going here. And I'm actually, I'm really happy to be just getting to do some actual spinning today. Um... I don't know, with running the business, not that I'm complaining, I'm glad things are going well. It's really easy, like, I don't know, yesterday I had to do, like, two months' worth of bookkeeping, which is not nearly as much fun as making the yarn. <laughs> or even when it's not something like that, just, like I said, uh, doing other things, you get really sucked into having to do more, like, management-type stuff instead of the actual, uh, like, grunt work, which in my case is the fun stuff, the yarn-making part. <laughs> So I am happy. Today's Thursday. The girls are at uh, preschool, and I don't know. Tuesday is usually kind of my day. I have to run around and do like mom and wife stuff, and do more of the bookkeeping end of things. And then Thursday is my day that I have a little bit of time to myself, and I actually get some work done. So that is what I'm doing now. So what I'm doing with the adding a little bit of sparkles, I'm just taking like a tiny little pinch of this blue fire star for those of you on not seeing the video of this and then I'm just pulling it down through the fiber and you don't want to run out of fiber and that way all the little funny ends get kind of stuck down in there and you can just kind of add it in like you would painting almost let me move the camera so I really like uh, that particular technique of instead of running it all through a drum carter is you can just, if I'm just doing a little bit, you can just kind of like place it in there. Ooh, and another fun thing I like to do with these dyed braids that I have no clue if it's a thing. See, I love this like marbleized effect in the yarn. And I discovered by accident one day that uh, <laughs> if you see how you can kind of flip the ribbon where like we've got the different colors in there, if you kind of flip it where you get both ends together while kind of drafting and pulling, you can actually plan to get the two colors like marbled together in there. And it actually makes for kind of like a two-plied effect, but in a single. 
and see how, like I said, it's really fun. I enjoy doing it that way, and I make a lot of singles ply yarn for uh, crochet and knitwear designers because that way they can, you know, get the yarn that they want, but they can have the uh, the thinner yard, the more yardage and maybe the thinner gauge than like our two ply bulky that I'm most well known for. And so by doing it this way, I'm actually able to kind of put some thought into it. See how I'm running the two colors together? And, uh, you know, kind of able to give them a more designed out look instead of, uh, you know, just running it through as just strips all the time. Which, I mean, I do uh, just run this through as strips. And one thing I have been talking a lot about here lately, but <laughs> on uh, the course is the, here, I'm going to put this here benefits of uh, sort of fiber prep when you get going on spinning. And I use these merino braids a lot. So when I say stripping, I mean stripping is what I'm talking about where you take like a thicker piece and then you're pulling it into what I refer to as ribbons. So that's what I'm talking about when I say stripping. And that helps get it. You're not dealing with like this big chunk of fiber that you're trying to get down smaller and then pre-drafting is where you're just kind of going through like this and just kind of loosening the fiber and that also is helpful if you're starting out or if you're just trying to get the ever elusive more even single that I'm always hearing people wanting to know how to do so if you do that then it's already especially if you're trying to get thinner yarn um it makes it a little bit easier because you've already kind of done some of the work going into it so if anybody has any questions about my uh, weird yarn marbling, see, you can kind of flip it. I'll show you this again. I put my two ends together to so see how I've got kind of like a loop here. And then I'm letting the two ends almost kind of ply on themselves as it's becoming a single. And it makes this really neat like painted effect that, like I said, that's how I use a lot of single ply yarn and I make a lot of single ply yarn. And then when you get down to the little funny part here, you just kind of unconnect it and make it just a ribbon again. So let's add in a little bit of the Angelica sparkle here. And I just lay that in here. And then you don't want it to be all in a clump, so kind of pull it down into the fibers. And you will end up with some all over your lap, but that's okay. And, uh, and then you're smoothing this in with this hand. So anyhow, I'm just gonna talk while this is going. The new big thing, that the reason, like I said, we've been busy is one of my uh, longtime childhood friends uh, who wanted to be an artist, like we were friends from like the third grade. She came up and visited me <laughs> and we went to, in Knoxville, it was actually has been named the uh, Maker City, which uh, according to the Chamber of Commerce, Knoxville, Tennessee wants to be known for the like handmade makers industry that, uh, you know, like when you think of techie stuff, you think of like the Silicon Valley. And apparently they won some sort of award through Etsy or got named by Etsy or something as the Maker City. Um, I think it was like five years ago. So before I was here. And so they have a summit every year called the Maker City Summit. And uh, they had speakers. I mean, it was like a big deal. Like it was like sponsored by like HGTV and a bunch of different people and Etsy, of course. And they had speakers from all over the place uh, that I really enjoyed going to. And you could go choose different like lectures and uh, market individuals to meet with. So April and I went to that um, God, last weekend, maybe. It's all running together on me. And then our wedding anniversary is this month. So October is like a big month for us because we love uh, all the old horror movies and haunted houses and like Halloween is our jam. So, uh, <laughs> and the girls love it too. So Killian's going to be Tinkerbell and Dee Dee is going to be a witch, which she then prefaces with a bad witch and then evilly cackles. So uh, that's my three-year-old and she takes after me. She's going to be a bad witch apparently for uh, Halloween. And I'm going to be a witch, too, because I'm a witch every year, because uh, I really loved the movie Hocus Pocus when I was a kid, and I'm cheap and lazy because I'm a mom. So having one random witch hat that I can stick on my head every year and be like, oh, look, I'm a witch, is uh, how that goes. But I'm open to suggestions. But... <laughs> So that's what Dee Dee says. Apparently we're going to go trick-or-treating and we're going to say trick-or-treat. I want a hamburger because Dee Dee is on a hamburger kick here lately. So uh, 
So I guess that's what we're doing. We're going to be witches and we're going to ask people for cheeseburgers. So we got a big month planned, as you can see. <laughs> so in amongst all of that, we have, uh, you know, yarn to make. And I just made another rambly video a minute ago that we did just launch our Design Your Own Dream Yarn course, which I'm super proud of. And it's one of something I was working on for like a whole year. And I can't believe that, like I had to keep stopping working on it due to uh, family stuff and Dee Dee got like kind of a infected bug bite this summer. So that involved lots of doctor stuff. And then I had doctor stuff and, so anyway, I'm I'm just tickled pink it finally all got done. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm thrilled to death that people seem to be really enjoying it for what I wanted it to be. Which was, uh, we've kind of, I get asked so many questions on here about kind of the similar questions. But it was all coming back to being able to make kind of the yarn out of your head. Or the yarn that you wanted for a certain project. To actually be able to make the right size or, you know, fiber choices. Because if you don't, like I said, it's stuff that I feel like is kind of second nature to me because I run a fiber business and I'm friends with a bunch of farmers and <laughs> fiber suppliers. And so I've really gotten this wonderful opportunity to play and experiment and make opinions on things. And then when people want custom yarns, whether it's me for a certain look for a certain collection or for a designer that wants a certain look for a certain collection they're making... Or for a customer, like I said, this is for a friend and customer, this is what I'm making here, to be able to think about how is this fiber best going to suit the colors I'm wanting or the texture I'm wanting or, you know, is it going to be woven, is it going to be crocheted, really being able to dig into the process of what it is you're wanting and why and then create that <laughs> is what the course is about and it is uh it is a beginner's course so it covers wheel basics and it is all shot on my spinolution wheels of course because that's what lives in my house and uh what i personally and i mean obviously i'm biased think are just wonderful to learn on i did learn on a lewitt but um it was because i'd never had one of these <laughs> i do find them very easy to teach on and to learn on because you're not having to, like, fight your wheel, um, you know, on other things. I have, in different yarn shops or places, tried to give little impromptu spinning lessons uh, to people on wheels that are not one of mine. And I just, and like I said, it might just be me. I felt like I was having to, like, fight the wheel and the, like, the yarn and the fiber and myself. <laughs> like, all at one time, and that was kind of too much. So it is all shot on my Spinolution wheels, and it's pretty much, if you like my YouTube channel, and you like my style, then you will like it, and if you don't, then please don't look into the course, because you will hate it, because it, <laughs> it's definitely a, uh, a light-hearted approach to beginning spinning, with a big emphasis on designing what type of yarn you want, not just like, hey, this is how the book says you're supposed to do it, so this is how you're supposed to do it, and there you go, the end. Like, I'm not a particularly good rule follower. I am self-taught. And uh, so my, the whole course idea is that we're going to teach you the basic techniques and why you would do something a certain way so that you can make your own decisions and thought processes on how you want to do things, either because it's how you most enjoy making them or it's the yarn that you most enjoy making or using. So that's what that's about. And uh, it is on my site. I'll link it in my bio. The coupon on the site, the 20% off one, does work for the course. And uh, if you join my email list, we may run specials on it from time to time. Um, I tried to make it, like I said, it is a very involved, extensive, long course. It's got almost three hours worth of footage and homework for each section. Jolene, stop being in the way. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not like, you know, three videos with me talking and that's it. Like, it, it has homework and six modules, almost three hours of videos. You know, it, it's a pretty extensive course. It's not the most expensive course out there by a long shot, but it's uh, definitely more involved than I think some of the ones that I was seeing on Craftsy, which I was hearing people complain, like, hey, I took one of these and it kind of, like, it was good, but it left me with definitely some holes, so I think I've made a really good middle of the road, uh, hopefully everything you would need to know 
course. And then, of course, you have the support of me and everybody at CHY, because um, I don't know the answer. I will find somebody that does. So, and I think I've got a pretty good track record on here. You can see where if people ask me a question, I try to answer it, and that's on free for YouTube, so... <laughs> So anyhow, the other thing, and let me see, I'll have to quit spinning for a second, that I'm working on is uh, we are having, and this is totally just for fun, so let me get the appropriate bag here. We are, <laughs> there I am, um, we're having a Outlander, <laughs> which I've talked about on here before, an Outlander, and I'm calling it a yarn along, since we, you can be either knitting or stupid camera, it's like never where I want it to be. <laughs> there we go. There you go. It's always like too close or too far or like you can only see half of my face like right now. Uh, um, we're doing an Outlander yarn along. I'll just hunch. <laughs> and uh, it's in our Facebook group. Um, so if you are on the Facebook, it's Handspun Yarn Love Group. And um, there you will see the Outlander yarn along event. And it's totally just for fun. There will be prizes. So uh, I'll be giving away probably a first, second, third prize of yet to be determined prizes but uh we'll probably all vote on those but yeah so we'll have there will be prizes and i've posted some uh crochet and knitting patterns that i had way too much fun looking up on ravelry last weekend and um, of course there's a bajillion so you know feel free to go find your own it's super laid back there's no like one pattern or one yarn um you are obviously you will be getting extra points because we're doing drawings based on point entries um, if you use hand spun, whether it's your hand spun, our hand spun, hand spun from your buddy, like whoever, um, at least as a part, I like mine, I think I'm just gonna be using hand spun. I don't know. I'm, I'm doing two. So one may be all hand spun and the other one may be hand spun as an accent. So you are welcome to use that, but you don't have to. Um, you can use whatever yarn you want, whatever pattern you want. Is the only rule is is that whatever the project is has to uh, make you it, it be reminiscent of the show Outlander, either the book or the TV show. So if it makes you feel like a really cool magical time traveler or, who runs around with a good-looking Scottishman while you're knitting it, then uh, that's the right project. So lots of and you can like I said they're beautiful. The show is just I mean you could watch it on mute just to look at the. Uh, the knitted garments are just gorgeous. They have a lot of the pretty, like, uh, wrist, like long wristlet sort of things that could be pushed up or down for working. Um, lots of pretty shawls, cowls. So, yeah, I mean, it's like, it, there's a lot of good inspiration out there. So, in the event page on our group, I have posted some patterns I found. You're welcome to use some of those. Um, I'm using some of those, <laughs> and I'm actually, I needed something to start knitting because I had finished my project, and the girls, and actually my husband, everybody but me, is going uh, to jiu-jitsu class now, which is the funniest thing you've ever seen, like little girls doing jiu-jitsu, but I needed, uh, between that and like women's groups at churches, we're in like mom's, uh, moms and kids church groups here which are wonderful and save my sanity i needed something to knit so this is what i've started i started one of the outlander themed projects early the official yarn along does not start till november 4th which is when the show comes back on but um think about it so that starts on November 4th, but I needed something now, so I'm starting this, which is a shawl, it's going to be a shawl, um, inspired by the show, and then I will probably put this particular project on pause if I haven't finished it, which, let's be real, I probably won't have finished it, <laughs> um, come November 4th, and then I have, like, a smaller, like, cow that is on that group, uh, picked out that I'm gonna use, I think, all hand spun for that one. Um, and it's gonna be really pretty. I'm excited. So I'm starting that one new with everybody on November 4th, but this is what I'm doing currently. And it looks really funny. It just looks like a big loop right now. You'd wear it as a giant necklace. But, uh, it is a shawl, and it is actually the first bottom-up shawl I've ever done. So I'm used to, when I'm used to doing shawls where you cast on like three stitches and then you keep increasing and increasing so it's, like it starts off all easy and then by the time you bind it off you're just like oh my goodness this is the biggest thing ever so i'm actually i'm kind of excited this one is you started off casting on 240 stitches as seen here 
and then it's going to increasingly get smaller. So I'm assuming by the time I'm done, I'm going to cast off like three stitch, bind off like three stitches and be like, boom, I'm done. <laughs> no, I'm actually, I'm pretty excited. This is my first time doing anything like that. So I'm excited about it. But this is some pretty yarn. The green is actually, uh, was sent to me in a fiber share package. Even though it was a spinning fiber share package, my last partner was just really awesome and sent me some yarn. And she lives in Norway. So the green is going to be some cool uh, local Norwegian yarn that she said uh, came from a cool, like, small mill. So I'm stoked about that. And then this purple is of uh, Cascade here in the States, out of Washington State, actually, where I used to live. We used to drive over the Cascade Mountains fairly often. Um, and this I got in a stupendous deal at a yarn shop in uh, North Myrtle Beach when we were on vacation. And they were having some sort of big uh, clearance sale. And so now I have this giant thing of yarn. So that's why I needed something to knit. And I kind of had this yarn in my stash. And uh, so I think I have some cool camel yarn I just spun. You can see the shawl has kind of like different sections. I think I am going to use some hand spun bulky in there, but this is as far as I've gotten thus far. But anyhow, it'd be super fun. And like I said, it's totally free. Um, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but please come join us in the Facebook. Uh, it's the group, not just the page. I know it's confusing, um, but I don't know. Quick rundown on that. Business pages on Facebook uh, nobody really hangs out on the pages, but the group, so if they're, if you're on a business page, it usually will have, like, a group, and then the group's usually where, like, the action's going down, or at least with us it is. That's where the all the fun stuff is. So it's called Hand Spun Yarn Love Group, and it is connected to the Crafty Housewife Yarns page. <laughs> and that's what we're doing this uh, knit or crochet along. Um, so come hang out, win some prizes, and show off what your yarn and your pattern is, and uh, it should be fun. And uh, please, go check out my course. Like I said, I did make this uh, based on all of the questions, suggestions, and uh, conversations I've had with people that I've been lucky enough to meet, either on YouTube. Uh, I think most of it from YouTube, though, honestly, or <laughs> just different Facebook pages and groups. So please go check it out, let me know what you think, and uh, I will post the discount code that's extra good for the next two days below um, as soon as I can get that figured out. So anyhow, let me know what you think. <laughs> and please come join us for either the course or the, the knit along. So see you soon.